Hi everybody, I'm back again with another PowerPoint tutorial, and this time we're going to look at how to incorporate an interactive quizzing slide into a live presentation. And there are ways that you can do formal assessments within PowerPoint. This isn't really formal, this is just part of the presentation, and it's an interactive element. So I can work with my audience. In this case, I'm going to ask them, which country consumes the most chocolate per capita? And I have three options here. I have America, Germany, and Switzerland. And you'll notice my cursor as I hover over these boxes, it turns interactive. There's the hand with the finger that I can click as opposed to just the regular arrow. And so if I were to ask my audience which country, maybe they'll say Germany. And so if I click on Germany, then there's that interactive element. A box appears on the screen and then it disappears. Maybe they'll say America. And the answer is incorrect. Try again. And finally, we'll say Switzerland. And then we can say correct, well done, and in this case I'm just going to have it linger on the screen. The other incorrect answers, they disappeared after a moment. So I think this interaction is really fun, it's very simple, and it can really help bring interactivity into your live presentation. So let's take a look at the back end and see how I did that. First of all, I'm going to go into the selection pane, and you can see that it's a simple slide, but there are a lot of elements right here. And so let's go ahead and hide everything, and let's introduce the layers one by one. The first things I have are aesthetic. I have a picture of chocolate that I got from stock photography, and then I have some background color. This is just a shape. I think I created a text box, and then if I go to format shape, you can go to edit the points, and I just dragged one of the points, and so that it was um, you know, more of a polygon shape as opposed to just a rectangle. And then I have my title, so that's the basic background of this slide. And then you can see the next three elements over here are the answers. So I have the American answer, the German answer, and the Swiss answer. One of them is correct, so this bottom one is correct, the others are incorrect. Now let's work down and go up, so we have the Swiss content. For one, right now I have a Swiss rectangle, and this is just a rectangle shape that's the same color as the background color, and that allows me to hide part of the box, because the box appears on the screen a little bit. And then I have the Swiss box, and that's what I'm going to be clicking on. And then just for fun, I created an icon, and I combined two circles and put an icon on top of that, and then grouped it together. And so you can see the oval, you can see half an oval, and how I did that is I create a circle. If you hold shift on the keyboard as you're drawing an oval, then it'll keep it constrained to a circle. And then I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and duplicate it. I'm going to put that off to the side real quick. And I'm going to take off the outline for both of those, actually. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to cover half of the circle. And so then I'll just keep both of the, I'll highlight both of those. And in the shape format ribbon, I'm going to go to keep the intercept of the shape. And then I can change the fill to something a little bit different. And then when I place that on top of each other, Let's go ahead and change the order so that the semicircle is on top of the other one. Then I can combine those. You'll want to nudge them so that they're good. Highlight both of them, and on the keyboard I hit Control G, and that creates the effect there. Looked like it wasn't perfect. I didn't make it right in the middle, so I should have done a better job there. And then at that point I can go to Insert a Picture, and in the Stock Images, then there are all kinds of icons that I can choose. So you can just choose something that's relevant to what you're working on and place it somewhere right in the middle. And if you want, you can group all of it, and then you have an icon to work with. So I did create an icon group right here, and then I have the Switzerland box. I have what would be an invisible box. It's the same color as the background, and that just covers up the answer from behind there. And then I did the same thing for the other groups. So I have a Germany box, and then the Germany icon, and then I did the same thing for America. And so that's the layout of my slide. Now we want to go to animate because we want those elements, those answers to animate. So I'm gonna hide those other elements so that we can really focus on the answer boxes right here. We have two incorrects and one correct. And then we'll go to the animations pane and we're gonna see all of the different animations. Let's look up this animation pane. And the first thing I have before anything happens, I want those elements to disappear. So they're invisible when I start my slide, and that's the first animation. And then I have other animations as well. So you can see right here that I have an animation that fades, and it also moves, and then after a while it disappears. And those are triggered as well. They're not, they don't appear on mouse click, they only appear on certain triggers. And to truly demonstrate that, I'm going to start with a blank slide. I'm going to put in a basic background just so that we can see what's going on there. 
and then I'm going to have my box. So this is my answer, and I want this to animate the way that these other boxes animate on the other slide. So let's go over to the animations pane, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually have it disappear. And so when the slide starts, I want it to automatically be disappeared. And then I want it to appear, I want it to fade in, but I'm not going to go to the drop down and click fade because it's going to replace the disappear with the fade. So what I want to do is actually add an animation and I'm going to add the fade in addition to the disappear. Now I want it to appear with a certain trigger. And so for this case, I'm just going to put a trigger right here. This is the trigger box and I'm going to go to the selection pane. I'm going to call it trigger box. And that first one, I'm just going to call it answer box. All right, so now I can go back and by default, I have it disappearing. It's disappearing on click and I want to start that with previous. So when the slides start, it automatically is going to be, it automatically is going to disappear. And then for the appearing, I want that to appear on click, but I want it to appear when I click on the trigger box specifically, not when I click somewhere else. And I'm going to extend that. I'm going to have it take maybe 0.75 seconds to appear. And so for now, let's just preview. That's pretty simple, but I'm going to preview that. I'm going to click the trigger button and it appears. And that's all I have. So I want to add another animation. I'm going to add a motion path and I want it to go. It's going to start there and I want it to end. I'm actually going to have it go to the right. And you can determine where do you want it to stop. I'm going to hold shift down and I'm going to drag it out to the right a little bit. And then the last thing that I'm going to add is I want it to fade out. Okay, so now I have these animations appearing, but I want the animation, the motion path to happen as it's fading in, and then I want it to disappear also with that previous one. And so the motion path, I'm going to put that as maybe one and a half second, and then it's going to take 0.75 seconds. Let's move that up to one second to fade in. And then I want this to appear after the previous. So after all of those are finished, I want it to fade out but I want to delay it a little bit, maybe by a second and a half. So after it's finished fading in and moving over, then I want it to wait for one and a half seconds and then I want it to fade out. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this box over it. And this box, I'm going to fill the shape with the same, same color as the background and I'm going to delete that outline. So now it's essentially hidden and it's going to appear from behind there. So let's take a look at it. This isn't very pretty, but it at least has the elements that we want. So I'm going to click on the trigger box and then you can see it appearing from behind there and then it fades away. So we have that concept. I'm going to delete the slide and now we understand the principles of what's happening here. And I can see the animations that all three of these boxes are going to disappear as soon as the slide starts. They're going to, it's going to be invisible right away. And then when I click on the America box, the American answer is going to fade in it's going to have a motion path, so it's going to come onto the screen, and then after some time, then it's going to fade away. The Germany answer has the exact same elements, and then the Swiss answer has two of those elements. It's going to fade, it's going to appear on screen, but then I don't have it fade away. So when they click on the correct answer, it's just going to linger on the screen until you go to the next slide. So I have the Swiss box, that's the trigger right there. I have a Swiss icon, that's purely ornamental, and then I have what I call the Swiss rectangle, and that's just because part of this appears off to the side and I don't want it to show. And so I'm going to hide that. I have a box that's just, it's the same color as the background. And then I have that for the rest of them too. So behind these elements are the answer boxes and they're just waiting to appear on the screen. And they'll appear when I click on the triggers, either the American box, the German box, or the Swiss box. So one last time I click on this and then I can see the answer. Oh, that's incorrect. That's also incorrect. And this one is correct. And this one will linger because I don't have that additional animation that it fades off. The other ones I have them fade into the background. So that's the principle of how you can get a pretty simple interactive quizzing element onto your slide. And this is great for engaging with your audience in a synchronous format that in real time, you can be having them provide input and then you get real time feedback. So let me know if this is helpful for you and if you like it by hitting that like button. Also subscribe for more notifications. I gave a presentation on PowerPoint last week at a conference and I was talking with somebody afterwards and we were talking about this concept of how a lot of people think PowerPoint is dead. But really our presentations can be banal, they can be boring, 
But the platform has a lot of really interesting features, and if we're creative enough, then we can really engage our audience. So that's what I challenge you to do. So I will see you all next week, and until then... Happy Disney morning!